Hi, this is Eats Lee from KalmeKakanawak.com and uh, today I want to talk about this image that you see here. It's an image that uh, a lot of people are familiar with at this point who have been in the indigenous revival movement. And um, some people call it Omateo, some people call, call it Unapku, depending on your influences. However, what most people don't know is uh, the way the symbol is used today and also the concept behind it have been fabricated by, by several people along the way and its uh, current, current, current its current use is not really indigenous. So we're going to go over the history of this symbol, how it started, um, how Unapku became attached to it, and then how Omatheos became attached to it. Well, let me rephrase that. Some of it is indigenous, however, um, the way it's interpreted today is, uh, as far as the concepts, that is not indigenous, and so we'll see that as we as we move forward. So to begin, we'll have to start talking about Unapku um, because that's the first concept that was attached to this image um, throughout history. So to start off, we need to discuss the word Unapku. Uh, Unapku is a, a Mayan word that means one god or only god. Uh, it first appeared in a 16th century uh, dictionary uh, written by Spanish friars and it was clear just from the entry it was really a word that was introduced to the Mayans by the by the Spaniards in order to help convert them. Um, Spaniards define it as the only living and true God. And further evidence for this is found in the Chilambalam of uh, Chumayel, which you see here. Unapku is also mentioned. And if you look at the sentences surrounding the Unapku in this particular entry, you'll see there's a lot of talk about Jesus Christ, a lot of talk about virgins and churches. And there's been considerable research done on the Chilambalam in particular, and it's it's been determined by scholars that it was Unapku was, as I said before in the previous example from the dictionary, it was used as a, a conversion tool for, for the Mayans. And there's been some research um, just recently that turned up that that points to the authors of the Chilambalam were, were writing Unapku and the Christianized version of, of the book uh, as a favor for the for the Spaniards and the Spaniards in return um, you know, gave gave them some some land and, and some some more power in their communities, and this has been uh, documented. And so so far, if you're following me, basically we have two entries for the word unapku. One uh, 16th century Spanish dictionary, and then the other is a uh, Chilambalam, which is a 17th or 18th century document, which has been proven to be um, tampered with uh, in order to help convert the Mayans. And so, if we look at all of the uh, Mayan inscriptions and you know the Mayan codices that we have, there's absolutely no mention of a unapku. Uh, which brings us to the next point here, which is um, it's going to be a philosopher, a Mexican philosopher. His name is uh, Domingo Martinez Paredes, and he wrote a book here, as you see uh, the cover here. Uh, it was called Unapku, and it translates as um, the synthesis of the philosophical thought of the Maya. And in this book. He um, interpreted Unapku as evidence for the Mayan monotheism, and um, he also used this image here, as you see, it's a circle within a um, within a square, and he used this uh, to claim at, as the symbol of Unapku. This is the symbol that the Mayans used uh, to describe Unapku. And so his book was uh, published in 1964, and um, analysis of the book has shown that he was uh, influenced by Freemasonry, which is uh, where he gets his symbol from, rather than from a Mayan source. And so this original idea of uh, Paredes, uh, with his Freemasonry influences, probably would have died if it were, were not for this man, for Unvas Men, who in his book um, that was written in 1986, Religion, Ciencia Maya, um, he started to, you know, talk about uh, Unapku, as, as Paredes uh, discussed in his book, and kind of started to popularize the idea. Um, however, Unapku reached uh, its height of popularity in 1987 when uh, 
Jose Arguez um, published his book titled The Mayan Factor. And so in The Mayan Factor, he um, said that he, you know, he, and in the book, Jose Arguez is mostly talking about his travels throughout Mexico. At one point, he talks about going to, I think, Oaxaca, and he said that he saw a rug there with this design on it. And um, the person selling it was a native uh, Zapoteca or Mish Mixteco. And, um, and the person told um, Jose, hey, look, we have yin yin a concept of yin yang as well. And that really struck Jose Arguelles. Uh, who knows if that story is correct. Um, I don't know if they sell this, uh, this symbol you know, on rugs in Mexico, but that is his claim. And so he took that symbol from that arbitrary conversation with the with the salesman, and he he said, "Hey, this is the new symbol of Unapku," and once he published that, everybody kind of was influenced by that, and uh, we slowly started to see the, the image appear, mostly in uh, New Age circles, and because uh, Jose Arguez was a um, an author in the New Age movement. So if you're still following along, you're probably wondering, well, where did this image come from? And so this image is actually, it is native uh, to central Mexico, not south of Mexico. And um, this is where it first appears here. This is um, the third page of the Codex uh, Manila Beciano, uh, which is a post-conquest uh, codex. Um, and in this, in the first few pages of the codex, we, we find a bunch of... Um, Different designs for for mantas or carpets or you know clothing, um, and so and if you look at the uh, the design, you, you I mean you'll see it. Uh, it actually appears three times in the codex, um, and on the third codex, it is described as a water spider, and it's very different as far as coloration goes. It's not the white and black that we were familiar with. It's uh, many different colors, green, red, black, yellow, and, um, and it, it, there's there's different versions of it, right? And so I believe Arguella said that the carpet he saw in uh, Oaxaca was, um, had a, was a purple and orange version of it. So I mean, it's definitely possible that it was produced. Uh, and he did witness it. However, it's important to realize that in this codex, uh, the post-conquest uh, Codex uh, Magda Beciano. This is the first time that we ever see the symbol anywhere in Mexico. And according to the text here, it has nothing to do with Unapku. It has nothing to do with Ometeo. Jose was just attributing Unapku, his version of Unapku, to the symbol without any type of evidence. Now, as I mentioned before, this symbol is um, connected with Unapku, but also with Ometeo. And Ometeoth is a different situation just because uh, it was created by this man, uh, Miguel Leon Portilla. And uh, Leon Portilla is a highly respected Mexican scholar. He's um, He's been awarded numerous, numerous medals in Mexico and also um, honorary doctorates in the United States. So his influence is pretty widespread, like I said, pretty well respected. And so as a result, um, Ometeoth is a little bit more accepted um, than Unapku as far as legitimacy. However, when we dig a little deeper, uh, we see that Omateo appears nowhere in any of the um, pre-conquest documents, any, anywhere in the post-conquest primary documents, and it first appears in 1956 in uh, Leon Portilla's book, La Filosofía Nahuatl. And um, and then again, he starts to elaborate on Omateo and Aztec thought and culture in 1963. And it's clear that he uses uh, just four sources. And, um, you know, there was a scholar by the name of Richard Haley who kind of tracked down those sources just to see um, where they're coming from. And uh, when you look at the sources that Leon Portilla uses, it's very, very clear that Omateo was created by him and it appears nowhere in the primary sources. And I wrote an article a couple months back about this topic um, and the origins of Omoteo. I'll put a link in, um, in the video description below if you're interested in reading more about that. But no matter how, how highly respected 
know somebody is. You just have to analyze the evidence on its own merits, and and uh, when you look at it, you come up that it's not very convincing. Um, however, Leon Portilla, his version of Omar Theot had um, a really widespread impact in uh, communities and uh, also in in scholarship. And so you see Omar Theot all over the place these days. And now it's it's been associated with the image that we showed earlier, and that credit can go to uh, this man, Arturo Mesa Gutierrez, who is, uh, who is a teacher in Mexico and he studies indigenous culture. He's published many, many books. And one book in particular had a pretty widespread impact. It was published in 1999 and uh, the title of it was um, Turquoise Mosaics. And so in this book, he was the first to associate or link Omateo, Leon Portilla's version of Omateo with uh, Unabku, and uh, you see it here in this particular text. And uh, from that point forward, Arturo Mesa has a widespread influence, especially in danza circles. And so, um, once he made that link between Omateo and Unabku, here we have the image again. Um, now people associate uh, this image uh, with Omateo as well as Unabku. And that is the end of our story. So in conclusion, yes, uh, the image is indigenous uh, to the Codex uh, Magdalbechiano and um, you know the concepts associated with the Unabku and Omateo, uh, you know, the, the only God and, and as Leon Portia describes Omateo is as the, um, the God of duality. Um, these do not appear I anywhere in indigenous philosophy and so they're, they're contrived and, and completely inaccurate. And so, in conclusion, uh, this symbol that you're all familiar with um, is or originates in the Codex uh, Magda Bechiano, so it is indigenous. However, it wasn't originally in the circle. I've seen many people make claims about it being in the circle, similar to um, Freemasonry claims. And so, uh, as you can see, it wasn't originally in the circle. It was in a, in a rectangle or square, and um, the, me the original meaning was water spider and had nothing to do with Unabku, which was invented um, by the Spaniards in order to convert the Mayas and also had nothing to do with Olmateo which was invented by Leon Portilla either by accident or intentionally.